In this segment, we're going to look at the actions taken by the operator to perform a typical turbine startup. Of course, we all know that there are different arrangements of turbines and control equipment, but the basic requirements for a startup are the same. Even before we think about admitting steam to the turbine, there are a number of very important maneuvers that must be carried out. If the turbine is returning to service after a long outage, then the first thing we must do is to place the unit on turning gear. This entails running a low pressure oil pump to circulate oil through all of the turbine and generator bearings and starting the hydrogen seal oil system. The turning gear motor can now be started to rotate the shaft at low speed, usually about 10. The procedure for charging the generator with hydrogen is detailed in the next module in this series. This maneuver takes several hours to complete. So it is clearly necessary to get an early start and plan the complete operation when returning a unit to service. During a short shutdown, say a few days, it is normal to leave the generator rotating on the turning gear and to keep the generator charged with hydrogen. Of course, if the generator is air-cooled, then we charge charging. However, there is another more vital reason for keeping the unit turning over when it is taken off load. Remember the turbine are extremely hot. If we were stationary immediately after shutting the machine down, experience shows that as the heat rises, it causes uneven expansion and distortion like this. This is known as hogging. And in some cases, the bend may be so severe that the rotor will not re recover its original profile even after cooling. Imagine trying to start a machine when there may be contact between moving and staying parts of the turbine. To prevent this problem, it is essential that the rotor be placed on turning gear immediately after the unit is taken out of service. This means that the heat is even spread around the rotor and there is consequently no chance of distortion. It should remain on turning gear for several days at least if a outage is contemplated. Operation of the turning after shutdown is so important that in the case of a failure of the equipment, say a motor failure, then drastic action must be taken. One method adopted is to rotate the shaft by hand, if possible, 180 degrees every half hour. On older machines, this was sometimes achieved by inserting a bar into the coupling. Thus, the first types of turning gear were often known as barring gear. On larger machines, this is not possible, and the only real solution for a failure of the turning gear is to admit steam once again to the turbine and run it up to speed. Well, that's enough about shutdown. We really want to talk about that in most cases, we'll find the turning gear already in service. The generator hydrogen cooling system will also be ready for operation and we'll be talking more about this in the next module. The next thing we must do is make steam at the turbine stop valve and that the stop valve drains are open sufficiently to allow any condensed steam to be discharged from. We'll be discussing the procedure for charging steam lines in another module. Once the main steam line is charged to full boiler pressure, it is now time to charge the steam chest by opening the turbine stop valve. Most modern stop valves are equipped with an internal bypass, which allows a small flow of steam to enter the steam chest in order to raise the metal temperature at a control. Of course, the stop valve drains will be retained fully open during this maneuver. Eventually, when the steam chest is fully charged, the stop valve will be opened wide and the stop valve 
of drains throttled in. During this period, the circulating water system should be started up and the flow of water established through the condenser. We can also begin to draw a vacuum in the condenser by extracting before before beginning this activity, it will be necessary to put the gland and the steam system into operation to prevent air from entering the turbine at the shaft seals. The vacuum pumps or startup ejectors, and we can observe the indicated decrease in back pressure from atmospheric, about 30 inches of mercury, down to or three inches. Summarizing then, the following conditions must be established steam can be admitted to the turbine. Lubrication system in service. Turning gear in Generator hydrogen system in service where applicable. Circulating water flow sensor. Gland steam system in service providing equipment in service with vacuum established in the condenser. Steam line from the boiler charged to open to charge the steam chest. Stop valve drains and steam chest drains open to ensure removal of any water that is condensate. All protective devices reset and available. In this condition, one method of admitting 